In the 15 years since YouTube was created, the site has thrown up some pretty memorable personalities, but every so often, YouTube throws out a creator who is just straight up crazy. Vitaly Zdorovetsky, better known to most as Vitaly ZDTV, fits that description better than any other YouTuber. The self-titled villain of YouTube has caused huge amounts of controversy over the years, having been arrested over 10 times, all in the name of making videos for his channel. However, he now faces the very real prospect of serving some serious jail time after a recent arrest for assault. Vitaly's influence across the site even to this day is hugely understated, and while many wouldn't even entertain the idea, the reality is he may have a case for being considered as one of the most influential creators ever on the site. So in this documentary, we're going to take a look at one of the most notorious creators YouTube has ever produced and how his story is just straight up insane and wouldn't seem out of place on a Hollywood script. Pranks and practical jokes as a form of entertainment have always been in the public eye, but have drastically changed over the years. Early practical jokes on YouTube mainly revolved around prank phone calls, and creators like Ownage Pranks and Ed Bassmaster were some of the first people on the site to jump on the trend of making these videos. Other YouTubers like comedian Greg Benson of Mediocre Films had also been testing the waters as he uploaded one of the first ever viral practical joke videos in 2006, where he shoved the microphone into the faces of the people he was interviewing. Hey Jessica, where are you from? Virginia. Virginia, whereabouts in Virginia? While these clips were funny, they were a long way away from the type of pranks we know of today, and YouTube in the early days was still trying to find its feet with how the prank genre would be defined. Enter Vitaly Zdorovetsky. Vitaly was born in Murmansk, Russia in 1992, and his family moved to America from the Ukraine when Vitaly was just seven years old. Life wasn't easy at first as he struggled to adapt to his new surroundings and found it difficult to make friends due to his lack of English. Eventually, he would learn the language and in high school, he went on to become known as the class joker and had plans to become a professional skateboarder. Unfortunately, due to constant injuries, these plans had to be put aside. However, armed with a camera, Vitaly saw a gap in the YouTube market for pranks to be more edgy and set up a YouTube channel in 2011 called Vitaly ZD TV. His first upload would be part of a regular series on his channel called Disturbing the Peace. And in these videos, Vitaly and his friends would push the boundaries well beyond what anyone else was doing on the site at that time and would basically run the risk of getting punched in order to make these videos. While they would initially get very little views, this series would lay the foundation for that edgy type of content that Vitaly wanted to make moving forward. Are you serious? What? Since when do you been hanging out with him? <laughs> so you told me you're not going to chill with me tonight and you go hey, with some man. What's your name? How whoa. you going? Whoa, whoa. What's up? That's messed up, nice bro. Nice hat, bro. That's take a, a walk. I'm not going to take a walk. Take you're a my ex-girlfriend, dog. You're what? You're my ex-girlfriend. Really? Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? Don't worry about what's it. What's her name? You didn't even know her name. Tell me what's her name is. You didn't even know her name. All right, have a good night, bro. No, I'm not. Have a good I'm night. Not, I'm not trying to fight with somebody. You have don't chill night. with my girlfriend like that. Have a good night. You, you don't chill with my girlfriend like that, bro. You're joking, right? No. You're joking, No, right? I met her on Craigslist long time ago on Casual Encounters. Vitaly would continue to upload pranks to his channel and would roll with the trends of the time. He created a character called the Russian Hitman, which was inspired by Ed Bassmaster's CIA prank. It looks like the suspect is looking at celebrities' boobies. He would enter stores or follow people on the street, pretending he was an undercover agent. And while this character would eventually become a mainstay on his channel, it would soon land him in some serious trouble. He also jumped on the success of Simple Pickup's How to Pick Up Girls series and began making similar style content. Vitaly was slowly creating this edgy brand of prank videos that no one else on the site was making. And in just under a year, his channel had gained a little over 5,000 subscribers. However, that number was about to jump up rapidly as Vitaly was about to release a video that would be the catalyst for his YouTube career to take off. On June the 2nd of 2012, Vitaly uploaded a video titled Miami Zombie Attack Prank. It would become one of the most famous prank videos of all time. 
Within a week, the video had surpassed 7 million views and had managed to make the national news. The media questioned whether the video had gone too far, as at the two minute mark in the video, a man points a gun at Vitaly as he chases him. The question was how close did the video come to having fatal consequences? Vitaly's boldness and willingness to risk his own personal safety was unlike anything else on the site, and as a result, he was about to usher in a whole new breed of pranksters that would try to match what he was doing. The Miami zombie attack prank can perhaps be considered as a key marker for helping to kick off this new era of pranks on YouTube. However, only a month after his Miami zombie video had gone viral, another one of his videos was about to land him in serious hot water. From jokes to jail, the men responsible for the infamous zombie pranks that went viral on YouTube may have taken things a little too far, and it seems they picked the wrong guy. Filmmakers Jonathan Venegas and Vitaly Dorovetsky have gone from being on the attack to being attacked. That's after police say they decided to play a prank on a Boca Raton man where Dorovetsky ran up to the man pretending to have a bag with an explosive in it. At one point, you can see the man running with Dorovetsky to get away. But surprisingly, Andre Brown kept his cool. Okay, I said sorry. We're Dorovetsky can later be heard apologizing for the prank. Hey, you're I don't realize. But to no avail. I was very upset. I couldn't believe somebody's going to try something like that. They would, um, you know, especially with a bomb. A prank that a Delray Beach man thought would go viral ended up getting him arrested. Vidali Zornovetsky was in court this morning after being arrested for a bomb hoax. Police say while his friend videotaped it, Vidali went up to a man outside of Publix in Boca Raton saying there was a bomb in the briefcase he was carrying. They both started running, and that's when police said Vidali told the man it was all a prank, he is being held on a $3,000 bond. Vitali had only been on the site for a year and was already gaining a reputation as the crazy Russian, and with all the media attention surrounding him, it helped to cement his notoriety. He would see huge growth on his channel over the next year, reaching over 1 million subscribers, and his growth coincided with a movement that was about to grip YouTube for the next few years, the rise of YouTube pranksters. With the mega success of Vitaly's zombie attack prank, it brought in a huge amount of new channels that wanted to get in on the action. These types of videos started to experience a huge boost in views across the site, and Vitaly was the man fronting this new breed of prankster. Alongside his channel, two others emerged that would effectively form the big three in the prank genre. One of those channels was Roman Atwood. His content was a lot more tame than Vitaly's and revolved mainly around jump scares. The other channel was FoosyTube. FoosyTube's content was geared more towards the social experiment style of pranks, and in the not too distant future, many of Fousey's pranks would turn out to be staged. However, Vitaly's content was far more edgy than the others, and of the three, he was the real trendsetter. In 2013, his impact and influence across the internet would truly be felt, and his antics would help to cement him as one of the most influential creators of all time. I was gonna tell you, look at your muscles, man, you're a small guy. You guys even lift? What'd you say, you pussy? Excuse me? What'd you say? You gonna punch me? What? You, you gonna hit me? If you say it again, I will. Oh yeah? Yeah. Really? You wanna get a battery charge? Do it again, I dare you. We'll do what? Say it again. Say what again? Say it again. I pooped my pants. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. Dude, what's wrong with you? Do you guys even lift small chicken legs? Pushing the boundaries once again, this video is perhaps what many would consider as Vitaly's best, and it became an instant classic. While the Do You Even Lift meme predates YouTube, Vitaly helped to bring it back to popularity and inspired hundreds of copycat videos to be uploaded to the site. Vitaly's next video, titled Extreme Homeless Man Makeover, would help to change the format of the Help the Homeless trend. While up until that point, the majority of the Helping the Homeless videos were small money giveaways inspired by the magic of Rahat, Vitaly's video changed things up. It was a huge hit, and once again, Vitaly had influenced many to go out and do the same. Eventually, Rahat would take this trend to a whole new level, as I've mentioned in a previous video, but without Vitaly, this may never have happened. Finally, the gold digger prank. Need I say any more? Hey, I was looking at you, and I thought you were really pretty, and I wanted to get your number. Is that too much to ask for, or? You know, Let's go out to dinner. I go out to dinner with people. Oh yeah, who you go to dinner? By yourself? Oh wow, 
That's, um, I don't usually ask twice, but you sure you don't want to go out with me? Your car? Yeah, it's my car. Why? Well, I might be able to go out for dinner with you. You There's might? A the There's what? There's a bar down the street. Oh, yeah. now you want to. Too bad. I don't like gold diggers. Possibly the defining video of the whole prank genre, in its first week it received over 18 million views, catapulting Vitaly ZDTV into the top three most viewed channels in the world that week with 45 million views. These types of numbers at the time were unprecedented for a prank channel. The Gold Digger prank is by far one of, if not the most reproduced video in YouTube history. Even after seven years, the Gold Digger pranks are still uploaded regularly to YouTube to this day, with some creators having made over 90 Gold Digger pranks for their channel. I genuinely think you'd have to search far and wide to find a member of the YouTube audience that hasn't seen a Gold Digger prank, and it all started with Vitaly. His influence and reputation now was blowing up across the site, and with the newfound fame, came 5 million new subscribers, but it also came with a lot of attention and people prying into his personal life. It had turned out that Vitaly had a hidden secret that unfortunately for him was about to surface. Somebody just asked if you still do porn. Uh, <laughs> uh, do I? I should, should I release another sex tape? It had transpired that when he turned 18 years old, he'd starred in an adult film for Bang Bros, but, the story doesn't quite end there. Vitaly, another male and the female actress, would perform the scene in the infamous Bang Bus. However, during the video, Vitaly would watch on as his friend performed while he sat on the sidelines, desperately trying to get it up while the man behind the camera continuously patronizes him about the whole situation. He would later address what happened in 2016 in a heartfelt video, explaining the reason why he did the scene. So yeah, one of my Russian homeboys one day calls me up and goes, uh, wanna shoot for Bang Bros? At this point, I was a waiter and I was desperate for money. I had to move out, so I had to do it. In the end, was it worth it? Totally, because I took that money and moved my mom out and myself to Los Angeles. And we never had to see the crazy stepdad again. In 2014, Vitaly's rise would continue and show no signs of stopping as he regularly hit millions of views and was the most subscribed to prank channel on the whole site. His Texas Chainsaw Massacre prank racked up 33 million views in two weeks, which once again proved Vitaly's incredible ability to produce viral pranks that no one else had the balls to create. As a result of his huge popularity and massive viewing figures, production company Collective Digital would begin producing a movie starring Vitaly, Roman Atwood, and another YouTube prankster, Dennis Rohde. The film was eventually picked up and distributed by the company Lionsgate and would be titled Natural Born Pranksters. In order to hype the film in its early days of planning, Vitaly would pull off one of his craziest stunts yet while risking the wrath of the Brazilian police. He wrote the words Natural Born Prankster on his body and streaked during the 2014 World Cup final in Brazil. I got my boots on, uh, socks, and then I just, I went for it. Uh, As you jumped over, were you freaking out just a best, little bit? the best adrenaline I ever had. So I literally have never felt like this. I the tingles around, I was like, all the flashes, everything, and I knew so many people were gonna see this. So I went to jail for an hour in Brazil and uh, paid a hundred dollar bail, and I was out. After just over a year and a half of production, Natural Born Pranksters was finally released. While the film did fare okay on DVD and iTunes sales, the critical reviews were slightly less favorable. The Los Angeles Times were quoted in their review of Natural Born Pranksters as saying, in borrowing the model of Jackass and Punked, this film lacks the essential DNA of what made those shows appealing. These pranksters aren't nearly so generous and their sadistic stunts display a deep, mean-spirited streak, resulting in racist, sexist, and homophobic harassment. Pretty harsh criticism, but this once again proving that despite the mega success of YouTubers and their huge audiences, it never really translates over to film, and natural-born pranksters was largely forgettable. 
Having been away from YouTube for two months to focus on the film, he had a reputation to maintain as the crazy Russian. So in true Vitaly fashion, he returned to the site with a ridiculous stunt that once again ended with his arrest and more attention in the national news. Back to our breaking news, a man believed to be a YouTube prankster has climbed the Hollywood sign. Tim Lynn monitoring the situation overhead in Sky 5. Tim. It may all be a stunt, a man climbing the Hollywood sign. Sky 9 shows him waving a flag that says, I'm back, which then flies away. You can see him using his phone like he's recording himself. LAPD choppers, five news choppers. What is going on right now? Prankster Vitaly ZDTV, as he is known, came down on his own and back apparently into another familiar spot, police custody. The villains missed me. They really missed me, the villains. And I have to show them who is back, natural born pranksters. Vitaly's journey to the top of YouTube was quite incredible, and he'd spent the last four years rising to the top of the pile of the YouTube pranksters and was seemingly untouchable. He'd accumulated over a billion views in that time and earned millions of dollars. He'd starred in his own film and started viral trends that set the internet ablaze with his hell-raising antics. However, things were soon about to go downhill very, very quickly. The attitude towards pranksters started to change within the YouTube community. Many were calling them out for their stupidity and for wasting police time and money and for staging their videos. The pranksters had taken it too far. There were examples of them staging fake bank robberies and bomb threats and making racist videos that negatively impacted certain communities all in the name of views. The fall of YouTube pranksters was edging nearer and in 2017, when the adpocalypse hit, the majority of the pranksters were absolutely massacred. Despite demonetization taking hold of Vitaly's channel, he rallied and continued with his usual style of content. And in one instance, in a jackass inspired video, he decided to get into the ring with a ball and had his jaw broken, all for the sake of YouTube views. Despite these final attempts to carry on as normal, unfortunately, due to the lack of family-friendly content on his channel, it meant the end of his hell-raising pranks. He was forced to change up his content and began uploading vlogs, but the damage was done and the views dropped significantly. He continued to streak at primetime sporting events, which eventually would lead to him getting banned from every stadium in the world, and a public spat with FoosyTube around assault allegations was in the YouTube drama sphere for a short period of time. He also tried to get in on the YouTube boxing action, but it didn't quite work out for him. Physically, he'd started to change as well and had bulked up significantly after admitting to being on steroids. Vitaly was relatively unrecognizable now from his former days. In his last big stunt on the site, he climbed to the top of one of the pyramids in Egypt and landed himself in an Egyptian prison for five days. An experience that he described as hell on earth and the resulting video gained 500,000 views, which perhaps four or five years ago would have gotten 10 million plus views. He publicly denounced YouTube and in return, they deleted some of Vitaly's most viewed videos due to graphic content. His Texas Chainsaw Massacre prank was removed with 60 million views to its name. Vitaly ZDTV was once one of the most influential channels on the site, but as of today, if you take a trip over to the channel, it's a very, very strange place and effectively a ghost town. There's been no uploads for over six months and a large amount of the videos before that a short exercise promos that are all under 60 seconds promoting an energy drink. It's very weird to see, but it shows that creators of edgy content like Vitaly are a dying breed on YouTube that are now pretty much extinct. So what exactly is Vitaly doing now? Yo, I just wanna say I love all my fans, supporters, friends around the world. You guys mean the world to me. You guys have been supporting me for years so just a little appreciation here and a lot of you guys asking me yo vitaly when are you gonna upload on youtube i won't be uploading on youtube much more why because youtube demonetized my whole channel they won't give me my diamond plaque button for 10 million subscribers so I made my own platform vitaly uncensored and it's killing it from the bottom of my heart thank you guys so much for the support and if you haven't joined yet you're really truly missing out because it's one of the latest websites in the world. You don't believe me? Find out. He moved away from YouTube to create his own site called Vitaly Uncensored. 
The site produces videos of nude models and other racy content which he films around his pranks. Many of you may have seen him promoting the site when his girlfriend ran onto the pitch during last year's Champions League final wearing nothing but a bikini with the Vitaly uncensored logo. That being said, it turned out to be a genius move as the stunt would earn more than a million followers for his girlfriend on Instagram in under 24 hours. Alongside that, the stunt supposedly earned Vitaly uncensored $4 million from sponsorships and signups to the website. So while his YouTube career had fallen off, he was making a killing from his new site. But in typical Vitaly fashion, the story doesn't end there. Also in the news, Vitaly on Easter day, on Easter, Vitaly on Easter, allegedly was in the bushes down, down in Miami, right? A jogger goes by, he jumps out of the bushes and just starts beating this jogger, right? It was unbelievable. The story came out on TMZ, we're like, this can't be true. On April the 12th, 2020, TMZ broke the story that Vitaly had been arrested for allegedly pouncing on a female jogger and beating her up. The images of the jogger were released and showed her face badly beaten. And according to the legal documents, she'd never met Vitaly before and they were unknown to each other. The lawsuit also states that the jogger, a lady named Lily Jensen, is suing for battery, assault, and intentional infliction of emotional distress, and is seeking damages of $30,000 and demands a trial by jury. While no other information has come to light on the circumstances yet, it doesn't look good for Vitaly. If found guilty, he may well be facing a lengthy spell in prison, which in turn, could lead to him having his green card revoked and in rare circumstances, the consequences of that could mean deportation back to Russia. Vitaly Zdorovetsky finally became the villain he always proclaimed he was. His final appearance in the media was just recently as he hit the headlines once again, this time for breaking his back and neck in a skydiving accident, something that surprisingly didn't seem out of place in the life of Vitaly. And that is where the story of the crazy Russian finishes for now. So to bring this video to an end, Vitaly leaves behind one of the most influential legacies on the platform. His influence on YouTube is rarely considered, but his footprint on the site is there for everyone to see. The Miami zombie attack prank was what really kicked off the modern era of YouTube pranksters and inspired so many other big channels in that category. Vitaly helped to create some of the most viral pranks ever on the site and influence some of the biggest trends. From changing the format of the Help the Homeless giveaways to the Do You Even Lift prank and perhaps his biggest legacy, the Gold Digger prank. All of this was Vitaly's influence and can still be seen regularly on YouTube. His whole brand was built around being a hellraiser and causing trouble. There's no doubt that he pushed the boundaries of risk far beyond what any other creator has by constantly getting arrested simply for the sake of YouTube content. And in doing so, he gained a reputation as probably the most notorious YouTuber ever. But in the end, that was what killed him on the site and led to complete demonetization of his channel. So to conclude, pranksters are now viewed in a very negative light across the platform. And it's a fairly common opinion that when pranksters were at their peak, that was considered one of the worst periods on YouTube. However, having researched the prank genre in great depth over my last few videos, I actually feel the complete opposite. And I believe it was one of the better times on YouTube. No doubt many of you will disagree with me wholeheartedly, but let me explain why I feel that way and perhaps can convince you otherwise. While the pranks themselves were pretty awful and irresponsible, the effect they had on YouTube's ecosystem was massive. It fed in to so much more. There was always drama and controversy for channels to feed off. H3H3 fathered in that new brand of comedic reaction, mainly based around pranksters. Keemstar was in his element at that time with the constant drama going on. Even legendary videos like this would never have existed if it wasn't for the prank genre. Even the Paul brothers' first videos on the site were pranks. So whether you consider it positive or negative, the impact and influence it had on YouTube at the time was huge and it's never remembered for that. So I put to you that that era of YouTube wasn't nearly as bad as it's remembered to be 
And if you compare it to what we have now, creators without freedom, never ending podcasts, ASMR videos, and mukbang challenges, I know I'd much rather have that era of YouTube back than the rubbish we have today. So that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, then please check out some of my others. And thanks very much for watching. And please don't subscribe because I probably won't make one of these videos again.